Okay, Dana 35 ring and pinion. I've already got the, uh, already filed the surface there to get any burrs off of there. It's an easy deal. We're going to show you how to heat this up to make it go on a little easier. So you don't really have to get it into the, an oven like uh, a lot of people do on other videos. Let me turn down the old swamp cooler over here. It's like 110 degrees here in Arizona. Put that on low because I'm sure it's windy, messing up the audio. But anyways, what I got is I got a heat gun here. You can do the same thing with the hair dryer. It just takes a little bit longer. Heat gun, elevated a little bit with a block so the heat will get all around it, blow all around it. And what I do is I get that baby on hot. And just close the lid a little bit. Of course, it's an old ring and pinion box there. It takes about 15 minutes, and that thing is going to be hotter than hell. And then we'll be installing it on a new carrier. We got a brand new carrier here because of the uh, gear ratio change. We couldn't use the uh, the OEM carrier. I better turn down this music a little bit so uh, YouTube don't get mad at me. But uh, anywho, we got brand new brand new spider gears. The other ones were in real bad shape. We'll be putting those in also. And uh, all this will be going into TJ over here. That'll be a little later in the video. And uh, we've got new Timken bearings going on. It's not necessary to have setup bearings with a Dana 35 because you're not, sh you're not shimming underneath the bearing. On a Dana 35, the shims go on the outside of the bearing inside it, inside the carrier so you can go ahead and press these on ahead of time the only place you really need setup bearings on the 35 is for the pinion and uh, I have the first setup of pinion already in there and uh, I've kind of we're doing the, this video a little out of sequence but maybe a, a lovely Laura assistant will uh, do some creative editing for me and fix it up Anyways, uh, that's heating, and uh, we're going to stop this, and we'll restart it here in a minute. Uh, while we're waiting for that ring, that ring gear to warm up, we might as well press on the sparing. Press on. the old Harbor Freight press, in 12 ton. And you can feel it hit bottom, so you don't want to overdo it. What we do next is, uh, it's not down all the way. You can see there's still a little gap there to go. So what we do is we take the old uh, inside of a bearing that I popped off, you know, basically the same size, you know, popped off, cut it apart. Put that baby right on there. like that and this should push it down the rest of the way puts the pressure on the inside of the bearing not on the outside cage because you don't want to press on that outside cage you run a risk of uh, ruining a nice bearing there it goes you can see it going down the rest of the way nice and snug you don't have to overdo it this press is put out more power than you think. <laughs> Anyways, on one side. Let's get the left over here. Is the other side ready? press too much. I think I can probably 
center that a little better. There you go. So now it's the other side. As soon as you feel any pressure, just stop. You'll feel the pressure change. It's probably hot enough now. Pull it out of that box over there. Okay, we're gonna grab that ring gear. I hope uh, that these rubber gloves uh, don't melt. I don't feel like tracking down my leather ones. We're gonna give it a try. Oh, that's pretty damn hot for these things. Gotta use a little uh, rags. Be surprised how hot Phew, this thing is smoking. Okay. I forgot to check what size. That double size ring ear holes on this thing. There we go. That's the ones I want right there. I'm going to bring it up on in there. That's about right. I'm gonna start one of these bad boys just, I know there's no Loctite on there yet. There will be. I'm gonna flip it over and just let her cool and it's gonna lock on. I mean, it's on all the way. It's, it's gonna lock on to that carrier. I just don't wanna be wrestling it when it's hot like that. Just let her chill for a while and then we're gonna apply some Loctite, blue Loctite to these and we'll put them on there and we'll torque them. Okay, we're gonna we do our ringer ringer bolts now. You can see this ringer is cooled down. There's no bolts in it, and it's uh it's holding nice and tight just from it, you know, constricting and shrinking back down after it cooled. So there was no fighting with it. Some people will put it on their cold, and they'll use the uh, ringer bolts to to suck it up and walk it up in there. I guess that's, you know, perfectly fine, but it seems like it has to force it on, and I'd rather have it just go on effortlessly. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a dab of Loctite here. This is gel Loctite. I'm not sure about this stuff. I mean, I know I'm sure it works, but it's so easy to get an excessive amount on there. It seems like, it's, it, seems like it dispenses too much. Anyways gonna work anyways. Gotta run it. Yeah, I honestly I've never tried a hair dryer on the ring gear, you know, in the box. Uh, you know, it, it'll probably get it hot enough to do the trick. At least put it on. You know, if it doesn't slip right on when it's warm, at least I know it'll go on with uh, less effort. If you're going to use the ring gear bolts to suck it up, 
I mean, it's better than firing up the oven in the house. And, uh, you know, like in the summertime, you know, it's a little hot in the house already. You don't want to do that, especially out here in Arizona. It's about 110 degrees today. And uh, you definitely don't want to turn on the oven. See, I don't like this stuff. You go to close it and it pushes out a big glob worth. So it's like you get a lot of waste with that style. I like the little uh, the liquid tube ones better. But anyways. Fifty-five pounds on this it calls for fifty-five. Oops, a little too far there. Fifty-five. Of course, you want to do it cross sequence. We're gonna, we're just gonna sneak up on stuff here. We're not gonna, we're not going right for fifty-five right off the bat. Choking up on this torque wrench a little bit just to make it a little easier, a little faster basically. Okay, we'll start sneaking up on the torque here a little bit. And then we'll switch over to the end of the handle like I'm supposed to be. So you gotta be on the end of the handle if you want an accurate torque reading. Okay, there we go. back over all of them just to make sure we're good. I like to support it here because it keeps it sometimes they want to like teeter totter off of the bolt and gall stuff out so I just kind of give a little support. Okay, she is torqued. I'm gonna pull these batteries out because I know if I leave these batteries in here, put this thing away with the batteries in it, it'll drain them out. I don't know if that was off camera, yeah. These things get expensive. <laughs> okay, this thing's basically ready for to install into the differential housing. I mean, you can't put the spider gears in yet because you got your C clips that are going to be coming in from the side. The axle's going to pop in. Your C clips got to go on, and you can't have the, the pin. You can't have the pin in the way, and 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 the smaller spider gears they just can't be in there. You won't be able to. You won't be able to install your your, your C clips, but you definitely got to put your side gears in after you slide this baby in. That's coming up here in a 
shortly. Hey, good morning. Here we are. This is the Dana 35. Um, a lot of you guys already know this already, but every Dana Spicer axle I've worked on has been stamped from the factory for the caps. A lot of people, you can't see the stamps usually because it's kind of dirty. Once you clean this edge off, you can see there, there's an A at sideways. And uh, let's see if we can focus on this. There's a sideways A. Oh, come on, folks, right there. Sideways A. Of course, we know it goes right there, matches that sideways A here. There's a straight up and down A. There's a straight up and down A in here. You gotta trust me on that. So you don't have to go beating on these things with a punch. It's, most of the time it's unnecessary, but it makes people feel a lot better. Anyways, here we go. Uh, we're gonna start off with the factory shims we got a starting off the 165 on this side 168 on this side I got these shims stacked where the fatter ones are on the outside sandwiching the delicate skinny ones thin ones on the inside because it's really easy to bend these washers up bend these shims up when you're trying to get them in there and load it the, you put the uh, you put the real thin ones to the outsides and you can really crease them and get them all messed up and then they're almost impossible to work with after that but there we go for our first attempt here let's slide this baby in oh, already I can feel it's a little loose it's going in too easy. I'm going to install it all the way anyways. Cut a handy little piece of wood. Just trace the shim. I just use some three-quarter ply. That way you can uh, tap the uh, tap the races in a little bit if you need to. Tap the shims in. Right there on the shim. Get those babies to go in. Hit the race real good. Do the same again over here. Went in kind of easy. Yeah, it's, there's not enough bearing preload in here. Let's see if we got any type of backlash. Okay, it feels like zero backlash. So what I need to do is move this ring gear that direction. So I need to take take some shims out of this side. I'll probably take about four thousandths out of there to start with. Of course that four is going to have to go over here plus more shims to get that to get to where it forces in, where you gotta force this thing in with with a uh, with some pressure. Because that just went in too easy and that just tells me there's not enough bearing preload. So I'm gonna go back to the uh, table where my shims are and uh, start going through the shims and get the right amount, the right count down. Get them right, get them in the right spots and give us another try. Let's give us another try. Patience, patience, patience. Oh, yeah. Apologize for the bad video over here. It's kind of dark. My drop light. I did exactly that. I dropped it. Filament broke in the bulb. Ah, we don't have enough preload still. It's still going in too easily. Still not enough preload, but I'm going to check that backlash a little bit there. Uh, 
backlash seems a little too much. Definitely too much. Um, so, rain gear has to go this way. And we need to add more preload. We need to squeeze them, squeeze them races against them bearings tighter. Are you? A little light tappy taps. See what we got going over here. Let's come on back out here. Don't want to get too brutal with them. Yeah, got some decent preload in there now. Now we're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere now. Okay, the caps are going to go back on. We'll check the backlash. Hopefully we got it where we can do a paint pattern. And then we'll start getting the, uh, the pinion depth dialed in. So I'm sure the pinion depth's not gonna be right on the money. It's, I put 40 thousandths under the washer. That's what was under it <clears throat> when I disassembled it. And, uh, you know, it's a good starting point to use what was in there. And then you just work from there. What I do is I'll do a paint pattern. And uh, I take a photograph of it. And I just go onto my computer and look up the pattern. If it, you know, if the pattern seems off, I'll take a photograph of it. Look it up on the computer. There's lots of paint patterns. There's some good sources online. Decipher the pattern and then make the proper adjustments. <clears throat> because I don't remember all the pattern stuff, you know. I don't do this every day. I do it often, but not every day. Can't remember all that stuff. Uh, might be a little too much backlash. We have too much. Well, we actually we have ten ten thousandths backlash. So we're right at the end, at the high side of the tolerances. I want it closer. I want to fall in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this ring gear closer to the pinion. I'm going to take two thousandths out of the ring gear side and I'm going to put it over here on the driver's side and that's going to move that ring gear over and it's going to shorten up that ten thousandths that we have and we'll fall somewhere right in the middle which would be good. Then we'll go for a paint pattern. Okay we're at six and a half right now just about seven. So we're on the low side, we're going to go with that. We're in spec. I'd rather be on the low side than the high side. So we're going to try a paint pattern next. 
So we're going to get the gear paint out and paint us a little pattern and see what we got. this glove on. We'll see you in a minute. Probably should have threw a little more shot of gear oil in with this uh, in with this paint. Makes it Makes it apply nicely that way. I like to do about three teeth. Three teeth is enough information. Okay, time to spin this thing. We are going to use a big hole hog. That's all I got, that's half inch drive. Anyways. That way. Change direction. Let's see what we got. We are not looking too bad. We're right in the we're in the middle of our tooth pattern, which is good. We're not running off the toe, we're not running off the heel. The coast side looks pretty dang good. Let me see if I can get the camera in there a little better. Okay, here we have the coast side. We're, uh, We're looking pretty good over here at the toe. The heel looks good, it's centered. We're centered in the in the tooth, which is really good. The drive side, which is a little more important. We're also centered there. That uh, looks pretty dang good. Let me get this light a little better so I can uh, let you all have a good look at this. See if we can get it better. Lighting. That's pretty good. Also, you can look at where it tracks the paint onto the rest of the gears, too. That'll give you an idea in case your paint is a little heavy. I should have thinned that paint down a little more with some gear oil. But actually we're looking pretty good. I am going to double check that. I may, uh, I may adjust the pinion. Try to get it a little deeper. They're hitting pretty good though. I'm going to double check that from what the experts have on the internet. And I want to be 100% sure but before this thing goes out. So, so far, I'm happy with the results. Okay, we have the pinion out. And, uh, 
we're going to go ahead and pull off the setup bearings off of it. And you can see I I engrave my bearings and then I paint over them and then I just scratch it off with a razor blade after it's dried and then it leaves the paint inside the leaves the paint inside of the uh, the depressions. Works out pretty good. That way you know it works out. And you can see it, you know, and you throw them in a box. This is good. This is for the Dana 30. P pinion, D Dana 30. And it also works on the Dana 35. You can do the same thing with their setup races for certain rounds. This is a D30 pinion, or you can use it for the D35 also. That's if you want a shim behind behind the race instead of shimming underneath the bearing. This is also a setup bearing also. That's a, I don't want to lose those shims. That's a, what we're going to use there. I still need to engrave this one yet. But it goes with my setup stuff. Now it's time to press on the new bearings. And of course, after everything gets together, we're gonna do another paint pattern just to make sure everything is okay. And uh, we'll be pressing this one on. This one here will will be pressed on as you install the yoke. As you install the, the yoke, what it's gonna do, it's gonna force that bearing down where it needs to be but there's no way to really press that on <laughs> without that method okay time to press this thing on Shims there, yes it is. There we go, nice and solid. Oh, I love that sound. Yeah, when you use these uh, gear splitters on the press, what you don't want to do is you don't want to run in that direction like that because you're putting all the weight and all the stress on these bolts and what it, what it has a tendency to do it'll start to bend these bolts like that next thing you know you're destroying your tool so if you run it that way it's bearing all the weight and force across the bulk of the tool. That'll keep it happy for a longer life. Okay, we're gonna install the uh, the new race. I had a setup race in this one, just in case I wanted to shim behind the race. You can shim these these. Uh, 35s behind the behind the, the race or you can do it under the bearing or you can do both either way it gets you the same results I usually just slide in the setup race and it just seems to keep me moving along Put the, this time we're not running anything under the race. We did all of our shimming on the pinion. Seems a nice snug fit. This guy brought in a nice dirty rig for me.
I'm going to flip this over. That's wanting to go in a little crooked. This way I can steer it if I flip it over. That way I can walk it in, straighten it out. It's hard to straighten it out when you run the other way. There we go. It's getting there. All right. There we go. I'm going to turn this over again. Make sure that thing's all the way bottomed out. Some of you might be wondering why my finger looks funny. It's not all there. <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm going to drive this seal in. We already got it started just a little bit there. Forgot to turn on the camera. These are one of those Harbor Freight seal drivers. They work, they work pretty good if they, if they have the right size seal for you. <laughs> a lot of times they don't match up. Up. More for good luck. There we go. I also put a little uh, ultra gray gas gasket maker just around the, the surface out there. Get a little extra seal. Put a little grease on the back of that seal also to keep the spring in and also greased up the seal surface. You know, that way, you know, they usually don't tear, but I they can. I've never torn one on an installation, but just do it anyways. And we're going to prep this yolk. Sounds like we're cooking breakfast. I'm going to put some of that sealer inside of here. That way you'll, you don't get any of that 90 weight seeping up through these splines. Zoom this back a little bit here. There we go. All right, put it on the old finger. Don't need a whole lot. But better safe than sorry. Looks like we pretty much got enough on there. The bearings are already installed. I just dropped it on in there on the before I put that seal on. And, uh, oh, one more thing. I'm gonna put some Loctite on the nut. There we go. Oh, watch this, let me close it. You get a big old blob. Oh no. I like the other Loctite better. Loctite brand. This is Permatex. You know. Permatex blue, medium strength. Not too impressed with it, but I'm sure it holds well. It's just a little messy to work with. Anyway, 
things. Back up here. We got our crush sleeve on there. Bearings on, the shim is under. Bearings oiled. That bearing's been oiled. You want to pre-oil those things. Definitely pre-oil them. That way when you do your rotational mass or rotational resistance measure, it'll be more accurate. And it's not dry on startup. Startup, you know, first run, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm talking about. The, uh, this guy's upgrading to the, the U-boat style yoke, getting away from the straps. It's the straps, you know, they have a tendency to fail. So we're gonna, I'm gonna throw a little dab of grease on this guy here that goes in the seal. Pinion's gonna go up from the inside out. Of course, that's the only way it's gonna go. Let me try and keep one hand on it. This is where it's nice sometimes to have a assistance. But I always end up having to do this myself. It ends up that way. Sometimes it's nice to grow a third hand. My friend Daniel always said he wishes he had an arm coming out of the top of his head. That way he could come right over and help him. <laughs> get this thing started. That way it won't fall out. Got to get enough threads showing on that pinion. That new uh, yoke is going on kind of snug, so that's going to make things even tougher. I think we got enough threads showing. Well, it'll pull itself on. The fun is getting ready to begin here shortly when we got to crush that sleeve. The old pipe wrench like this. The only downfall is, is it it does put some little scars on the yoke, but in reality, it doesn't hurt anything. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my big impact, and I'll start creeping up on this. I'll, I'll take all the take all the end play out first, and then you got to be really careful not to overcrush the crush sleeve. You really got to sneak up on that slowly, a little bit at a time. Yeah, the fun's going to start to begin. put this bad boy on here for now. Let's start sneaking up, Let's get some of the slack out of here. Okay, still got a lot of in play. A ways to go. Closer. Starting to crush the crush sleeve now. I can feel the resistance. Okay, now we switch tools. Get rid of the impact. We're going to go to a uh, Three quarter inch drive ratchet with a BF cheater. 
over the end of it. So what we want to do is, this pipe wrench is going to go up against the track bar over here, or the trailing arm. And it's going to find itself a place to hold that yoke. So now what we want to do is get squared up on that nut real good. start crushing this thing. It takes a lot of force to do it. But with a cheater bar, you can do it. Let's check our end plate. See, I can still feel it. You can hear it. I don't need to pull this wrench off. That pipe wrench can stay right there and I can feel the Okay, now that the end plate is taken up, now it gets really critical. Now is when you do not want to over tighten this thing because do a little bit and then just check it by hand. Once you get some resistance, you can start checking it with your torque wrench. This is one of those little inch pound ones that you don't want to use a digital on it either. You don't want to use a click style. They don't, they don't work for this. It has to be the bar style. So I'm just going to go a little bit, I'm going to check for resistance, and then a little bit, check for resistance. Okay, that was just a little bit. I mean, we're talking very little. Okay, we got slight resistance, but it's not worth checking yet. I know we're not even close right now. It comes up quick. Once it starts getting close, it comes quick. Okay, it's time to do our first check. Still feels loose. I just want to see how close we are. We're about six inch pounds. Means we're about halfway there. I believe it's 19 pounds is your max, and it's. Uh, I'm gonna double check the spec on that, but you don't want to get up over 19. Here we go. We're gonna check again. We're at 10. One of my spec sources says 12 to 19. The different source says 12 to 14. So I'm going to try to target right around 14. And that's for new bearings. When you put new bearings in, the resistance setting is a little bit higher than when you're using used bearings. Used bearings, the whole scale moves down a little lighter on the inch pounds. We've got new ones in here, so we're going to try to hit 14, or really close to it, you know. But the main thing is, is just try not to go over and try not to be under. Just hit in the middle somewhere and everything's happy. Right there. It looked like I moved it more than what I actually did, but that, that pipe wrench was slipping up that that bar, my bar stop over there. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, that's feeling a lot better. Okay, <laughs> we're at 14 right now. Just that little bit changed at four pounds. Okay, we're gonna leave it right there at 14. That's where I wanted to be. And uh, so now what we do next is we put in the carrier, recheck the pattern. Everything looks good, nothing's changed. We're going to go ahead and put our axles in, our C clips, the pin, and the spider gears coming up next.
Okay, we double checked our pattern. It's still good. It's still happy. We went ahead and we locked tight our bolts, our cap bolts. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to set them to 50, 50 pounds. I was wrong on that torque spec. It was 55. So we're going to go to 55. We'll creep up on it a little bit here. Don't need to go directly to 55 on your bolt. Just kind of creep up on them. There we go. Oops, that's what I like to do. I like to sneak up on it. Go back and forth a little bit. This makes me feel better. Got to have a little warm, fuzzy feeling. Okay, now it's axle time. Spider gears, pins, C clips. Okay, time to put in the spider gears. I don't know if you can see on the camera or not, but there's a, I got the axle stubbed out a little bit, sticking out through here. There's one. push the axle through all the way. You'll be able to see better on the second axle what I'm doing. It's just basically I've done it for here. Oops, I gotta grab a seat clip. After you get the C-clip on there, just push the axle back in. It'll hold it in place. Okay, now we're going to do it on the second one. <coughs> okay, you can see the axle sticking out here. Push her back a little more. Make enough room for that spider here to get on there. And you gotta make sure your thrust washers are on there. And they are. Okay, push it all the way through like that. It exposes the groove there for the C-clip to slide into. After you get the C-clip in, push the axle back towards the outside and it just holds it in place. Now we're gonna uh, rotate the carrier a little bit after we put these first small spider gear in. It's going to go like this. And what we do is we rotate. It's a little fiddling to get this right. That one like that. it fell out. Take two. It's a lot better like that. And get the other one in. Let's try something different here.
Yeah, it takes a little fiddling to get these things in. Looks like it might be one too far from the, the one, the far one. There's a little deal. Yeah, I believe I'm going too fast. Good part about these spider gears, they only go back in one way. They don't go together the wrong way. They do not go together the wrong way. Battery doesn't go dead on the camera. Okay, they're directly opposite of each other. At least it looked like they're directly opposite of each other. Now let's roll this. Carry her around. Just about got her. Let's roll around this way and get a peek at it. Yeah. I think a little light tap. <sighs> Gotta turn that hole. So it lines up. With the bolt that's going to go through. There we go. A little bit of this wonderful gel thread locker on this little guy. A little quarter inch wrench. Just tighten that guy down nice and snug. Don't go breaking it. <laughs> you don't want that. Okay, now that we're getting ready to uh, button this thing up, um, we're going to talk about something real quick that most people don't talk about on their YouTube videos and stuff is break in. After you get it all together, what you want to do is uh, don't be taking it on the freeway and running high speeds and, and uh, you know, for any extended different uh, distances and whatnot. Take some short drives. You know, don't take it over 45 or 50 miles an hour. Go for about, you know, 10 miles or so and let it cool down. See, what happens is this oil, th these differentials get really hot when they're new and they're breaking in. These gears, they get hot. And what happens when the oil gets real hot, it gets real thin and it starts to lose its viscosity and it, and it starts to not lubricate properly. And uh, you can damage your ring and pinion. 
So uh, what you want to do is take it for a short drive and then park it. Let it cool down. Take it for another short drive. You know, do some you know short drives around town. And I would do that, you know, three, four, five times before even thinking about getting it on the freeway. And then when you do go on the freeway, don't make it a long trip. Just, you know, hit some freeway speeds, you know, on a short little grocery run or something. And let it cool down. And don't forget to change out this oil, you know, no later than 500 miles. You want to get that break-in oil out of there. And then that way it gives you a chance to inspect everything. Because if something's going wrong, you know, you, the tail is going to be in the oil. You know, if you see a bunch of chunks and chips, there'll be a little bit of metallic in there from it breaking in. But if it's too much, then it, it raises an eyebrow. Double check everything. Double check your backlash. Double, just double check stuff. See what's going on. Then get get your fresh oil back in there if everything looks good, and then, then enjoy it. Go have fun. So uh, that's it for this one, and and uh, we'll try and get another video out on some other subject soon. And everybody take care.